This guidelines is derived from a review article published in uh, Hormone Research in Pediatrics uh, by Monica Grover and et al. Uh, metabolic bone disease of prematurity, it is a under mineralization of preterm infant arising from inadequate prenatal and postnatal calcium and uh, phosphorus uh, accrual. It may lead to uh, rickets and eventually fractures. So we have two cases. The case one is a 25 weeks uh, old preterm 650 grammar baby had uh, sepsis baby had nec rds cld apnea of prematurity and baby was eventually managed with npo and uh, prolonged parental nutrition baby was also given loop diuretics and uh, steroids uh, x-ray was done for uh, respiratory pathology and was suggestive of multiple uh, refractures with uh, rachetic changes investigations was like calcium was normal phosphorus was low alp was on the higher side vitamin d and pth was normal and the total uh, tubular resorption of phosphate was very high. The normal risk from pre for range for preterm is between 78 to 91 percent. So the TRP is high and uh, PTG is normal. So it is a phosphorus deficiency. Why do you do TRP? Is it routinely required? So uh, after the initial screening, sir, uh, if the screening is suggestive, so that's what I'm asking. How will TRP help you? To uh, delineate the cause, sir, whether it is a phosphorus deficiency or calcium deficiency. In th this guidelines, they have uh, given uh, like. Uh, it does have its uh, TRP is less, there is less, uh, more chances of having uh, cancer deficiency and vitamin deficiency. And if TRP is more than 95% and there. That is phosphorus deficiency. Only they are uh, phosphorus deficiency. No, they are saying if. But would not PTH high will cause that? Will give you the poor. Yes. PTH or uh, TRP can so or and if PTH is high, ultimately TRP will be high. So anyway, that's carry So basically, what I'm trying to say is that TRP will be high in either case. Sir, so, so. because if you have phosphorus loss or deficiency, the only thing where you have phosphorus deficiency in the nutrition, so. then your tubular resorption may be high. So. That is the only thing. So in uh, calcium deficiency also, PTH will be high. Yeah, so that, in that just, uh, TRP will be low. Sir. Low, sir. That is saying that he, so you are losing less, you are losing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, second case, uh, 28-weeker, baby had IUGR and baby was on prolonged CPAP. Baby was given unfortified uh, express breast milk. On day 56, there was decreased movement of the hand and X-ray was suggestive of uh, rachetic changes. In this case, the uh, PTH was high and the TRP was low. So a diagnosis of calcium deficiency was made. Dietary calcium. So, so briefly again, uh, we are discussing about the risk factors. Uh, at birth, if there is prematurity or uh, the, the, the baby is ex extreme low birth weight or uh, very low birth weight. If the baby postnatally is having is on prolonged parental nutrition for more than five weeks, or if there is so GI pathology like necrotizing enterocolitis, if there is CLD or there is reduced physical activity. Other risk factors like such babies, they are on uh, a lot of medications like glucocorticoids. They have, uh, they can reduce bone formation and increase bone resorption. Loop diuretics, they cause hypercalciuria. anti drugs like phenobarbital, they increase the vitamin D metabolism. Methyl xanthes like caffeine used for preterm babies, they increase bone resorption. Anticoagulants, they reduce the bone formation. And aluminum in the parental nutrition, reduce the bone formation. So pathophysiology. If the phosphorus is low, it will cause low PTH and the renal calcium absorption will be low and there will be high phosphorus reabsorption. So there will be high TRP. At the same time, low phosphate will trigger uh, one alpha uh, hydrolysis activity and the uh, calcitriol levels will be high. So there will be increased gut resorption of calcium and phosphorus and the net effect will be normal calcium and uh, low phosphorus and high ALP. So calcium levels are not that reliable independently. They can be uh, norm there will be normal calcemia due to increased uh, calcitriol action. So eventually, it will lead to decreased mineralization and metabolic bone disease of prematurity. If there is low calcium, there will be high PTH, and high PTH will lead to increased renal calcium reabsorption and low phosphorus uh, reabsorption. So there will be low TRP. Net effect is same: normal calcium, low phosphorus, and high ALP. And high pH will lead to increased gut absorption of calcium and phosphorus. At the same time, there will be increased bone resorption. So the net effect is same, metabolic bone disease or prematurity.
so uh, briefly about screening there are various tests like initial at the 4 to 6 we, we go for uh, calcium phosphorus and alp if alp is more than 600 or it is trending up then it's a sign of uh, metabolic bone disease of prematurity or if it is more than 80 uh, 800 that is usually found with rickets calcium less than 8.5 and more than 10.5 are uh, significant and if the serum phosphorus is less than 4 and that too over a period of 1 to 2 weeks it is significant trp more than 95% uh, is seen in low phosphorus normal range for uh, pritam is between 78 to 91 vitamin d uh, deficiency less than 20 and the, our goal for therapy is we should keep it more than 20 pts more than uh, 100 is usually seen with calcium deficiency screening algorithm Infants with risk factor, risk factors as already discussed, like preterm less than 27 weeks of gestation, less than 1 kg of weight, and if the baby is on uh, or parental nutrition for more than 4 weeks, or the baby is receiving multiple drugs like uh, diuretics or uh, caffeine, then if the baby is having risk factors, then we should uh, do a routine supplementation. We should give them fortified milk or we should give them preterm formula. Along with that, vitamin D supplementation should be given for uh, as for the age and gestation age and weight. Screening for calcium, phosphorus and alkaline phosphatase should be done at 4 to 6 weeks. If the screening is normal, then we should continue the supplementation along with vitamin D and we should repeat the screening at 2 weeks, every 2 weeks until the baby is going on full feeds or the corrected gestation age is more than 37 weeks. Or in between, we can do the clinical shelter changes. Repeat serum calcium phosphorus alkaline phosphatase should be done close to discharge if the baby is exclusively breastfeed or if the baby is on non preterm formula and baby is less than 40 weeks of gestation age. If the screening is abnormal, then we should check for TRP, PTH, and vitamin D. And we should optimize the vitamin D levels more than 20. We should continue the calcium phosphorus supplementation. And based on the high uh, uh, TRP and PTH, like if the TRP is high and PTH is normal, which is suggestive of phosphorus, then we should introduce phosphorus at the dose of 10 to 50 mg per kg per day in 2 to 4 divided doses. We will start with 10 and gradually build up to 50. If the TRP is low and PTH is high, which is suggestive of calcium deficiency, in this case, apart from the uh, preventive dose, we will add on calcium in the dose of 10 to 80 mg per kg per day in 2 to 4 divided doses and we should optimize vitamin D to more than 20. And along with this, we should screen them. Uh, we should repeat the investigations every one to two weeks. We should monitor TRP, urine calcium creatinine ratio. And we should adjust the dose of supply. Uh, supp uh, we should adjust the therapeutic doses and we can give both calcium and phosphorus at the same time if needed. If there is pers uh, persistently high PTH and if there is enteral calcium intolerance, then we can consider calcitriol. If the ALP has normalized, then we can repeat the X-ray for resolution of rickets. And we should discontinue supplementation when the uh, lab normalizes. So this is comparison between the enteral and parental uh, calcium phosphorus delivery. Like uh, 2013 AAP recommendation. Sorry for the slides, sir. there's some uh, confusion in the slides, sir. Calcium should be given uh, mg per kg per day between 150 to 220. Sir has already discussed this slide. And phosphorus is almost half and uh, vitamin D is 200 to 400. In the unfortified uh, milk, the calcium phosphorus ratio is 2 is to 1. And unfortified human milk contain very less uh, amount of calcium and phosphorus. Fortified milk contains calcium phosphorus one point, uh, in the ratio of 1.7 to uh, is to 1. Preterm formula contains calcium phosphorus ratio in 1.8 is to 1. And transition formula, the calcium phosphorus ratio is 1.8 is to 1. Again, uh, when the baby is on parental nutrition, we should uh, ensure enough calcium phosphorus. And the ratio of calcium phosphorus is 0.8 to 1.1 millimole per millimole. And the calcium content is usually 32 to 80 and phosphorus is 31 to 62 and vitamin D is 400. This is given for initial few days and then we should increase the calcium uh, calcium ratio to 1 to 1.3 is to 1. 
so the, uh, there is a role of calcitriol in uh, metabolic bone disease of prematurity especially when there is secondary hyperparathyroidism and the pt is more than 100 uh, if there is a uh, gi intolerance for calcium if there is renal and hepatic insufficiency the calcitriol is started in the dose of 0.05 to 0.2 microgram per kg per day in 1 to 2 divided doses it improves the absorption of calcium and phosphorus from the gut and high doses of calcitriol can lead to hypercalcemia hypercalcemia so we should screen the patient frequently with calcium pth and uh, urine calcium creatine ratio calcitriol doses can be increased if the serum calcium and uh, urine calcium creatine ratio is low and ptn remains high ptn remains high prevention as already discussed we should start them at the calcium phosphorus ratio which mimic the physiological uh, in utero accretion the energy intake should be optimal like for parental nutrition it should be 90 to 120 kilocalories per kg per day and for enteral nutrition it should be around 110 to 135 kilocalories per kg per day if the baby is having metabolic bone disease of prematurity and babies in an icu there should be a signage on the bedside alerting the treating physician about the condition of baby so we should do a safe handling of these babies physical therapy and uh, massaging should be introduced in uh, when the baby is in an icu for 5 to 15 minutes per day and they should be taught to the parents before going on discharge so that they can continue it at home